Hello everyone, welcome to Fiora. So, I'm still sick. That's why there's a towel draped over my left shoulder. Um, I'll try to edit out anything that gets gross. But in the meantime, a lot of you have been trying to figure out if this tank is worth grinding for. So we're going to take a look at a match and find out. But before we take a look at a match, I have something to do, and that is actually review the tank stats. So... I know, right? Totally an epic tease. Get the match started and jump to the garage. So, let's have a look at this tank. Now, my British Heavy crew is my second female crew who are going to eventually get into the FV215B. I'm currently on the Churchill 7. I'm not here to talk about how terrible that tank is. We're going to talk about this tank. This wonderful piece of... I don't know. Okay, I'm going to be honest here. The hull armor sucks. If any part of your hull is exposed, even this upper plate, you're going to get penetrated. Like, just flat out. Hull armor sucks. The turret configuration is the same turret configuration off the Centurion 7-1. Which is pretty shitty. Because unless they hit this gun mantle they have a good chance of penetrating. So you really have to, like, manipulate the gun mantle here and rely on it and rely on them not to get a good shot into this area right here on the line or this area right here. Not this over here near the smoke grenade launcher. This right here next to the mantle is pretty weak. This up here is pretty weak. This down here is pretty weak. All that is weak. So... That's the armor. Let's take a look at the gun. 17 pounder. Accuracy's horrible. Aim time is... That's really a too long aim time for this gun. I mean, seriously, it is. Because you're going to see the reload time on it and your, your jaw's going to drop at how long it takes. It takes almost as long to aim as it does to reload. Um, damage is... Tier 7 heavy tank. Yeah, it's the Black Prince's same 17 pound gun, by the way. So, that's your gun. That you're working with the Tier 7. Which, the penetration's average. The rate of fire is the only exceptional part here. And it's the part that you're going to have to pay attention to. This is not a tank you play peekaboo with. This is not a tank for beginners. So, if you were considering purchasing this, and you're not really good, you're going to be disappointed. If you want a British premium heavy tank, get the Excelsior. Get this thing. Why? Good frontal armor, high rate of fire gun, with average penetration, bad accuracy, but high rate of fire makes up for it with the massive DPM you pack and it's actually got a really nice power to rate ratio almost 15 it is something nice about this tank I will say the engine is pretty potent I mean it's 800 horsepower pushing around 56 tons which is not great except for for some reason this thing accelerates and stays at its maximum speed the entire time that it's moving. Top speed is 31. You will hit 31 all day long. So that's a good thing. Uh, view range is 380, which is actually pretty good for a heavy tank at tier 7. Actually, I think that's really good. Let's go take a look at what's the Black Prince's view range? 370, so you got further than the Black Prince. Let's go take a look at the T29. You're further than the Americans. Hey, hey, Tiger, I don't think you're going to beat it. Oh, nope, you're beating the Tigers. You're beating the Tigers. You have better view range than Tigers. You, of course, have better view range than the IS. And I'm pretty sure you have better view range than the IS-2. 
Yeah, is there is this the Japanese medium even? No, you have like the best tier seven view range. <laughs> period at three eighty. So you will spot them before they spot you in most cases. That's the good news. Good, that's good news. Okay, it's good news. So, I get, but again, you're going to see some gameplay here, and I'm going to start the gameplay, and you're going to see what I'm talking about, that this is not a tank for a beginner. This is definitely a tank for someone who knows what they're doing. So, back to the match on Swamp. We are advancing into... Well, I'm going to go north, actually, because our north looks a little light, and I don't think anyone's really going to expect this kind of a heavy tank to go up there. Now, you'll notice, I never drop below 22, 23 kph, and my top speed's only 31. I'm doing my top speed and change the whole time. It doesn't matter what terrain I'm on, I'm going. It's just, this is as fast as it goes. Can we get a little more speed out of this thing, Wargaming? Like, maybe 3, 4 kilometers? Just 35. 35 would be nice. 34 would be, you know, nice still, too. But, but you'll notice that I'm having no trouble. These other tanks, who are obviously faster than me, are pulling ahead, yes. But... They're not pulling ahead very quickly because they're slowing down and speeding up, slowing down and speeding up. And my speed is just, I'm going, and I will not stop, and I will continue this continuous, constant speed no matter what. That's the good news. Tank does accelerate. You're about to see some more good news. Now, if your style of gameplay is to slap something really hard, pull back, and laugh while you reload. This is not your tank. The style of gameplay for this tank is something completely non-traditional for most vehicles in World of Tanks. Most vehicles, it's fire and pull back. No. You need a hull down position. That's one. And as you can see, I outspotted the Black Prince. He didn't see me. I have six cents. He didn't see me. What? Apparently this thing has some okay camouflage, even while moving. As a matter of fact, I don't think he's gonna actually see me this entire time. So camouflaged heavy tank is camouflaged. Yep, I spot him. 200 meters away, can't see me. Because of that tree. This is what you want. You want to be hauled down, you want to find a target, and you want to just fire. You want to not move and just be able to keep pounding from a safe position or a position where you're only your turret is exposed because your turret will bounce stuff. He's done. I don't do a lot of damage per shot, but okay, I engage this t tank at 2 minutes 12 seconds. And I'm just banging away at it. So 12 minutes, 12 seconds is when I started, and took me 20 seconds to strip him of all his hit points by myself. Now remember when I said the gun isn't the most accurate thing in the world? Well, I missed that one. What? Where did that even go? <laughs> this is a little embarrassing. This gun is not the most accurate thing in the world. Was that even in the... Thank you. It does, however, make up for the fact of its inaccuracy and that in three seconds you're going to shoot again anyway. So, we're going to speed this up because it's going to take me a while to engage something else. And I have a second replay for you guys, don't worry. You're going to get to see how to make this tank's armor work as well as make its gun work. You're seeing how to make its gun work now. Okay. So as you can see, it took me a total of a minute and a half to cross the swamp. Most heavy tanks would take, actually took me a minute exactly to cross the swamp. Most tanks would take a lot longer than that. This thing, again, does its top speed. It doesn't care what's in the way. 
Also having 1500 hit points at tier 7, that's a lot of HP. However, the defect of course being that your 150 alpha means you have to shoot yourself 10 times to kill yourself. Again, this is not a tank. You should expect to do massive amounts of damage in instantly. Does it out DPM every other tier 7 tank in existence? Yes. Flat out, it out DPMs them all. The 17 pound gun with three and a half second reload is just going to do a lot of damage if you penetrate. Problem being, doesn't always penetrate, doesn't always go where you shoot, and you really have to manipulate it where you can sit still and fire because it takes you almost as long to aim as it does to load. I know the M12's back here because we already scattered up there at the cap. There he is. The good news is, you have spaced armor. Otherwise, that would have really hurt. Actually, that really did hurt, but it would have probably, it might have killed me if I didn't have spaced armor. So, that's the end of the first replay. Now let's show you how to work its armor configuration. Now, I'm loading up the second replay right now. It's starting up. It'll take a second. And then I'm going to show you a couple things. One, I'm going to show you the expected damage of the tank, which is going to make you snicker. Because you're going to realize that this might be a win 8 machine if you can learn to work it. The other thing I'm going to show you is the stats. So let's get this loaded up. Come on. There we go. We're loading into Lakeville. Now, I make an interesting choice here. You're going to get this started. I'm not going to city. I'm going to valley, and I'm going to push valley. I have a turret armored gun depression heavy tank. This is something I can do this with. I'm top tier. I have gun depression. I have turret armor. Let's try it. You know, just experiment. If you will for me. And I'm probably going to run into things of all tiers. And we're going to see just how to manipulate. Now remember, I only have stupidly thin hull armor. So... Just about anything could punch the upper plate of my hull. I'm telling them, unless you're pushing, go to town or get up here with me in Valley, because you guys back there, the Stug and the 29, are going to have nothing to shoot. Try for the cheap shot. I do spot the enemy already and bounce the syphilis machine. <laughs> the Saint, the, the Stuart Emil. We call it Saint Emil, Syphilis Machine, a bunch of names for it. I lock onto the Artie and consider going over after it. Wait a second, I'm a, I want to get unspotted and re-angle and... Well, our Artie takes care of the artillery problem. Which means that I can have a nice leisurely stroll through... Oh my god, that's a lot of tanks. Again, 17 pound gun. These are tier 5s and 6s and a, tier set and a pair of 7s. I can punch them all. And they can shoot me in the turret all they want. I'm going to poke up here and look for this Stuart Emil. There he is. He blows a shot. And then, oh my god, what are you doing? <laughs> the answer is no. Just no. <laughs> You're not going anywhere. You're going to die. And you know what you've just done? You have provided me with ample cover to push up and engage your friends. Now, as you can see, I'm not doing a lot of damage per shot, but I am firing really quick. Is this tank worth it? Probably. Actually, yeah, I will say it. This tank is worth it if you if you like this kind of combat, where you just have to find a place to sit and be hauled down and well-armored and just pound away at tanks. That time the Emil got me. Let's see where he got me. If we can. Did the Emil get me? I think that was him. I can't see where he got me. Oh, right there. Like I said, this upper area up here is pretty weak. I think this is a bug. That should be armored. But it's not. So, Wargaming? Yeah, address that model issue. That should be armored.
Panzer IV thinks he's going to use his buddy for cover, but he has that really big commander's hatch on top, and I just put one right through it, which makes him back off, which means I now have this thing as cover, and I'm keeping it between me and the Emil. And the Emil bounces off my turret. That is a 200 plus penetration gun. Can't hurt me. They blow my track. I reposition and I want to engage the Emil now. He's the closest threat. He's the next threat. Again, bounces off. But also my gun, you know, isn't the most accurate thing in the world. Now the Cromwell, I'm going to shoot him. Because he's the next closest target. This is something to remember when you're doing these when you're doing these gun depression games. You want to look for the closest target and the one that's the easiest to engage with the minimum exposure. Cromwell's the least exposure right now. I'm engaging him. I keep checking that Emil though. I want to make sure he's not going to come around and my turret's going to be pointed the wrong way. Up oh, there he is. Fire back up. He hits the corpse. Ah, uh, my shot goes wild. Again, gun takes way too long to aim. 2.3 2 seconds is too long for this gun to aim. It really needs to aim quicker. Go ahead and push up, and I'm going to engage these guys, because the Cromwell has backed off and cowered away. As has the Emil. Reduce him to a one-shot. Cromwell hits me. Plant one and back up, and ow, the Emil finally poked around, grew a pair, poked around and shot me. Alright, if I move up, the Emil can't engage me anymore, because my friends will shoot him. And I can take care of these guys on the left. So we're going to move across. See, I'm paying attention to where the enemies are, so that I can engage one at a time. Oh, this is too easy. Now, I can't take another hit from the Emil. I no longer have the advantage of the gun depression area I was just in. So I'm going to put one in and back up, and then I'm going to let somebody else either kill him or take the shot. All right, he's done. This has actually turned out to be a really good game. Rar indeed. Rar indeed. The Chaffee, as it turns out, was out on us. And I'm not going to get my top gun. But I'm content to take the win. I start to move off Captain Gun. Nah, just take it. Take the extra cap points, take the extra XP, and call it a day. So that's the end of this match. Let's go take a look at the stats and the thing I wanted to show you guys. So, here we have the Watt Labs expected damage. Oh my god, what is wrong with this? Come on, Firefox. Cooperate with me. Okay, fine. Unexpectedly crash Firefox. Middle of a recording here, Firefox. Why you fail on me? Thank you. Okay, so, here is the expected damage, this line, 1,006, that's seven shots, 21 seconds of combat is what that is. If you can effectively continue firing for more than a minute, you've made Unicom stats on this tank. However, I will give you fair warning, you will likely not win in this tank. It's really hard to achieve a win. It's really hard to get kills, too, because you're a DPM machine. But you're not a kill machine because you don't have that big slappy alpha. Now let's go take a look at the final stats. So we're going to look at... So this is the swamp. Second place in XP for some reason. I think he just bounced a lot more shots. Yeah, he bounced more shells. He did not, however, clinch the steel wall that went to the T-150. 25 shots fired, 2,500 damage. That's about what you can expect. You can expect four shots to miss, uh, one in every ten shots. You can expect two out of every ten shots or so to bounce, one out of every ten shots, uh, out of every five shots to miss, and 
Still, you're going to do a lot of damage. Just by surviving, you can output damage in this tank. Lakeville. Mastery. Steel Wall. High Cow. What did I do? 3,600 damage. 1,400 experience points. But again, that's because I really know what I'm doing. If you're not super confident with turret games, if you're not super confident with with being aggressive, this is not the tank for you. Now you've got a couple more days to earn it or buy it while it's on sale. After that, it goes into the regular shop. So, if you want a more friendly, less skill required tank, I would go get an Excelsior. If you have to have a British Heavy, get an Excelsior. It's cheaper, it's a better tank for its tier, it's more satisfying, you can carry in it easier. I mean, there's just so much more that's better about it. Plus it has hull armor. This thing doesn't have hull armor. Annoyingly has... Let me put it to you this way. When I see one of these, I just aim at the upper plate with standard AP rounds and shoot. And it goes in. That's all it takes. Or if his turret is turned slightly to the side, those big protrusions on the side of it that are on the Centurion's turret as well, just shoot into him when he's turned to the side. It'll go right in. And it gets ammo racked constantly from every angle. It's like the tank has armor, and behind that it's nothing but ammo racks before you get to the crew. It doesn't get set on fire a lot. I have yet to be set on fire. But it gets ammo racked so much. I've played 50 games in it. I've yet to be set on fire. But ammo rack is... Oh, God. I think it's the number one thing. I, I've used the repair kit more for ammo racks for this vehicle than I have for my... Uh, go away. My uh, tracks. It's, it's that bad about being ammo racked. In the meantime, I hope you guys have enjoyed this. This is Fiora. Officially signing up for right now. You're only getting one video today. By the way, here's your gold winners. Almost forgot. Here's your winner for the day. Uh, the 1250 golds will be going out later this week. Um, I don't know when I'm going to send those out exactly yet. I kind of want to wait until I'm better. Um, and can make sure that everything works right. And that I'm putting out more than one video a day. But I really only want to do one video right now. Just because it hurts to talk. Yeah, I haven't been showing it, but it really hurts. In the meantime, uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed. This is Fiora, officially signing out for right now. And I will see you in the next video, guys. Bye-bye. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And if you did, why not click the like button? It would really help the channel and let me know that you're enjoying my content. Want to see more content? There's a subscribe icon right there so you know when I put up videos I would appreciate it also if you help grow this channel's community so share this with your friends or just put it up on Facebook. Want to help Fiora out directly? There are three ways you can do this. One is the patronage page which all the investment towards I put right back into the channel through contests and paying for things like video editing software. Then there are two ways to support the channel directly. One is click the ads that YouTube shows you. This is how YouTube pays its content creators, by your clicks on those advertisements. The other and last way to support the channel is through fan funding that is now available through Fiora's channel page. If you happen to have an extra dollar or two, it would really let Fiora know that her videos mean something to you. Anyway, please check out these other videos here on the end page collage. And as always, I will see you on the battlefield or in the next video. Till then, this is Fiora signing out.